Hello, everyone, and welcome to Building Better SQL, uh, Advanced SQL Part 1. So what we're going to be doing is uh, it's, this is going to be connected kind of with a written version um, of basically improving your SQL. Uh, we're also going to be basically attaching the code and the, the gists that are connected to this. So you'll be able to look them up um, if you'd like to. Um, so uh, let's kind of get into things. Uh, let's just start with an overview of kind of what this whole series is going to be about. So the goal of this series is to walk through examples of how to basically just improve your SQL skills. Um, I, I think at a certain point, once you start getting into more advanced things that um, SQL or, or improving your SQL skills is less about uh, syntax and uh, a lot more about uh, technique and thinking through your data workflow. And it's much higher level. It's not, it's not about, it's not so much about syntax. It's not about using, you know, some fancy clause. Um, so we're going to provide some real examples of like, basically like, bad examples and good examples of, of kind of queries or not necessarily even bad examples or good good examples um kind of this last point is like to tie to that is giving perspective on maintainable and readable sql uh, i think there's another thing with advanced uh, sql or sql it's that a lot of people don't necessarily talk about is it's really kind of up for debate often and i think that's what makes it kind of a little more higher level is you have to think about it. Uh, it's, you can't just write it. It really is that next level of thinking. Just, it, it's not just, you know, again, I can't give you an easy answer to every problem, but I'm gonna give you some kind of general things that I see and some general ways you can fix them. So let's, let's kind of go into it. Uh, so where do we start? Uh, so let's, again, it's kind of where does, what does advanced SQL mean, at least to us? Again, it's not, about, it's not so much about syntax, um, it's about holistic design and uh, in your workflows. And, and it's about thinking about the consequences. I think that's, that's a big thing. It's about thinking about if I write my SQL in this way, you know, will it be maintainable in the future? Will it be readable in the future? Will someone in the future, and, and this includes yourself, be able to fix this SQL, be able to understand it? Uh, if some new piece, if some new con like component comes in, will it impact it? You know, it, it's all these little things that, that make a huge difference down the line. And so that, that's kind of what uh, we're gonna talk about. Uh, we're really gonna be talking about and focusing on not just uh, code, but we're gonna be talking about, again, higher level design, why we, why we should do it uh, one way or the other, or why you might decide to do it one way and why you might decide to do it the other. Because um, that's, again, it's, it's really those pros and cons that we're gonna be weighing whenever we're designing things uh, in SQL for good or for bad. Okay, so let's kind of keep going. So let's go through our first kind of real SQL example, um, case logic, and when should it be a table? So I'm gonna walk through a SQL example here in a second, but before I go through that, I'm just gonna pre-give uh, this to you, which is you gotta ask yourself, you know, with, with case logic, so um, I'm hoping everyone here knows what a case statement is, you gotta ask yourself, you know, are you, are you repeating that logic over and over again uh, in other queries? You know, is, are you doing some sort of case logic that is repetitive? Um, which we'll talk about it more why it's not great, but just to give kind of a light uh, intro to it. You know, when you repeat logic over and over again in different places, one in a view in one place, uh, in an ad hoc query, in a Tableau uh, custom query, and it's that repetitive logic, what you're asking for in the future is if that logic ever needs to change, you now need to go into every place this logic exists and change it. And in general, you probably don't even know every place that logic exists. Um, so that's why, you know, uh, we'll, we'll show this later. It should be in a table probably, most likely. Again, like that's up for debate, but from a maintainable standpoint, it's going to make your code much more maintainable. Uh, the second kind of way we will see this and, you know, where should case logic, you know, maybe be a table is, you know, are we using our SQL like an enumeration? So basically, are we saying, uh, you know, and again, I'll walk through this here in a second, but uh, just to outline it, you know, are we saying, you know, case when ID equals one, then some co sort of category, when uh, ID equals two, some sort of category. And so you're basically treating it almost like an enumeration where maybe it should just be a table. Um, and we'll kind of talk through why that's, why that's the way we think it should be um, when we go through the SQL. Uh, so let's, let, let's get to the SQL so that we can kind of show uh, what we're thinking. All right, so let's kind of look at this first example. So in this first example, what, what we ended up doing, just kind of show, is like, let's say, you know, we've got one query. This is just a dumbed down query um, that a VI developer developed uh, that connects to a Tableau dashboard, right? And they do all this logic here where they're, they're trying to basically set some sort of category. I, again, we're doing, this is just like a patient data set and we're using procedure codes 
um, which is just, <clears throat> just the codes they kind of use to depict what procedures were done for a patient. Um, that we're doing age. Uh, and so what you'll see here is doing some sort of categorization um, where we're trying to break out, you know, a specific concept, whatever it might be. Again, we're trying to flag some sort of, again, whatever we're calling category one, category two, or no category. Um, but then below, we've got this ad hoc query where possibly this data analyst is trying to filter out this information. And you'll see that the logic is kind of the same, and thus it kind of repeats itself, but in a different way too. And that's what's kind of deceptive here. It's like, why this is kind of sometimes hard to figure out is sometimes it'll be obvious. Like sometimes you'll have, you know, one query will be this obvious case statement and then you'll have another query, right? Like you'll just have a very similar query, you know, maybe it's got a join involved here or something to like, you know, dim procedures uh, or something. See procedures, um, you know, uh, I'm not gonna kind of go through the whole thing, but you know, I might join somewhere else to like, um, Again, I'm not really going through the on clauses here, um, but you might join it also to like eligibility. Um, for those who don't know, I'm kind of just referring to uh, entities in healthcare. It's one of the places that I've worked a lot in. So this would be kind of probably something you'd see is eligibility procedures, patient claims, that kind of data would be all joined together. And again, you might be repeating this logic here for some other reason. It might not be a Tableau dashboard. You know, it might be another ad hoc query. It might be a pipeline where you're actually maybe doing this, um, putting into a table, but everyone might not know that you're doing this kind of work. And so that's kind of one of the issues we see happen a lot. And, and that's somewhere where you can do, you can actually impact your company a lot by if you see this, if you see this kind of repetition, even if it's not necessarily straightforward and then tell them, hey, maybe we should make this into one table uh, or, or at least put this into some sort of table. It doesn't have to be one table, maybe just add it to the table. Uh, you end up reducing the places in the future where you have to change logic. So like, let's say, for some reason we want to add a new or maybe maybe not new maybe we want to change one of these logic logical categories um so instead of 9980 it's now we want 9970 but now we have to go everywhere and find okay this is 9 okay well we got to change it here and we have to change it here and we have to remember every place that it is and again it seems small i think that's one of the things is like this seems like a small issue but for anyone who's worked in you know data or tech you, you understand that like even a small change like this um can take weeks or even months sometimes because you don't know where everything is uh you don't know the impact of the change um and it's just all of these little things where it's like it's too it's it's deceptively small but if you can catch it early it saves a ton of time uh down the line um and again i i think this is one of those things that like it's not it's not it's like i think I think a lot of people assume that advanced SQL must be something fancy, um, you know, like analytic statements, but that's only one piece. I think it's a lot more about design and thinking through things like this. All right, so let's go over a similar, similar concept, but slightly different. All right, so here's a similar thing that uh, you might see a lot in some people's queries is they'll do this thing where maybe it's not necessarily always an ID. It might not be a straightforward ID, but there's something where they're clearly doing some sort of enumeration where it's like, well, clearly you're just doing, you know, almost like an ID and then some sort of some sort of category or dimensional data that you're trying to reference. And it could be because it doesn't exist in a table already. And so honestly, I think the biggest thing that usually causes this is um, laziness. And I, I, I don't mean that even in a bad way. I mean, like every engineer, I think, is tempted to do, to do this. And it's about having the discipline to realize maybe we should make this into a table. This is definitely one of those cases where I think there's a little bit of debate. Um, you know, like if you know 100% for sure that this will never change, maybe, and this is the only place you need this logic, you might be able to argue me that, yeah, we can just use a case statement. But if, if we know that in a month, this is likely to change, um, and we're going to have to add in a new case statement or a new when clause here in the future, right? Like we're going to be like, oh, well, we need to, uh, you know, we're going to get a new ID here. You know, we're getting ID 12, so we need to add in category 10 or something. Um, then I'm going to probably suggest that you don't do it this way because if you know that you're going to have this, um, then you should probably just put it into a table because here's, and let me, let me explain why. So one of the big reasons why is then your change isn't, uh, then your change isn't code focused, it's data focused. So in the future, when you need to add this new ID, you just have to go into the table and insert this new, you know, new ID 12 and category 10. And instead, you've just got this joining to that table, right? In the future, you should just have this joining to whatever dim category. 
obviously you probably won't be joining two dim tables together, but again, this is just for examples. Or maybe it's already in dim procedure for all I know. It could just be in dim procedure already, um, but let's say it's not for some reason, this is, you're doing like a snowflake type model. So on p dot, you know, category ID equals c dot category. So basically you've, you've, you've kind of uh, circumvented the problem because now you just have to join it here and every new category uh, that shows up will get the correct um, description. So whenever you need to add a new one, you just need to add it to the data and not the code. Again, this kind of goes back to changing code can take a long time. Like it, it's silly, but I've, you know, especially at big companies that are slowly moving, um, even changing data takes a long time. Even adding a table takes a long time. Um, so trying to make sure you build code that's uh, more sustainable, uh, maintainable, and is is important. And I think you know thinking about when to use a case statement versus when to use a table is one of those things. Um, and these are just two examples. I think I've I've seen even more examples where it gets more complex, where there might be a when statement with like 30 ands attached to it, and there's like 50 cases. Um, I know it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but the the point being that. You know, you, you do have to think about this, these when clauses because they can become very obnoxious very quickly and very hard to maintain. Um, and that's, that's really gonna be the point. Like this is kind of step one, we're talking about maintainability. And again, this is a slight, just a slight change in your coding style and your SQL, you know, not coding, you call it just SQL writing style that will, I think, take you to that next level. So with that, you know, good luck. Uh, I really hope, you know, how, however you're planning to develop your SQL, you know, you just take a moment to think about it. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, if I could give any advice to anyone, just think about what you're gonna write, don't just write it. Uh, as someone who's just written SQL plenty of times, it will probably bite you. Uh, I think SQL is deceptively easy, but the hard part about SQL isn't the SQL, it's the data. It's often how that data is formed and it's, it's that whole workflow. Uh, and that's kind of what we're gonna talk about more in this course. So some other concepts we'll kind of talk about uh, is CTEs and how many CTEs are too many. I think this is, a discussion I've had multiple times with people, you know, what is too many CTEs? Because at a certain point, there's just too many CTEs to become readable. Um, and we'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about uh, workflows and logic flows. So it's kind of similar to this case statement, but it goes even further than that. So like how much logic goes where, um, you know, if you put logic in your pipeline, logic in your custom SQL, logic in your, you know, Tableau SQL, logic even further into your calculated fields in Tableau, you know, you've got, you know, a lot of different places where things can fail. And so thinking that through. And so those are, again, two more examples that we're going to talk about. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll continue kind of going through this. And I'm really hoping to, you know, help you improve your SQL skills, help you think about things more in depth. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.